I don't know what I'd do without it. It's pretty awesome. It stores five drives on it uh, and it connects via Thunderbolt. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Niche Focus video. And today is going to be one of my favorite videos of all time because we're talking about backups, protecting your data without spending tens of thousands of dollars. Today's video also has a sponsor. It is Recover It, which we'll be talking way more in depth towards the end of the video. I'm going to use their software to show you that if you accidentally delete a bunch of your files or just files go missing, how to get it back super easily. So thanks to Recover It for sponsoring today's video. Let's get right into it. So first off, we're gonna talk about storage. So if you're one of those people who is just constantly buying new external hard drives and have them stacking up in the closet somewhere, please listen up because there's a much better, more affordable and efficient way to do it. Now there's really two ways to do it. You can have a DAS or a NAS. DAS stands for direct attached storage and the other one is network attached storage. So do you want something that is a network based or directly plugged in? I've always gone with the direct plug-in just because I like the consistent speeds and not needing to rely on my home network or anything like that. There's some great brands out there, but the one that I've decided to go with for the past five years or so is Drobo. It's been extremely reliable for me, and this actually is the 5D that I chose to go with back in like 2016 or something like that. It's been a total workhorse for me, and it truly stores everything. My entire life is on this thing. I don't know what I'd do without it. It's pretty awesome. It stores five drives on it, uh, and it connects via Thunderbolt. All right, so obviously that was a joke. Yep, it's broken. It's pretty much a defective unit anyway, so I just wanted to do that little gag. So I got rid of this guy, and I upgraded to this. So this guy, I genuinely don't want to drop. So this is the Drobo 8D, Drobo's newest uh, direct attached storage unit. And as you can tell, it's significantly larger than the 5D. It's shorter, so instead of stacking the drives vertically, they now go horizontal. I still have two drive bays left, I believe. Yep, so I got two free ones, but I have 20, seven terabytes of total storage. I think there's like 38 drives technically, or 38 terabyte worth of drives. I have three 10 terabytes, and then like two fours and a three or something like that. So if you don't know anything about how RAID arrays or these devices work, basically, instead of having a bunch of external hard drives that you need to constantly upgrade to because you're always filling up with data, well, let's say you buy a four terabyte hard drive, you go out, you buy it, you use it for a couple months, you fill that up, and then you need to buy another one because you don't want to reformat that four terabytes because you want to keep all that footage, projects, documents, whatever's on it. And so you put that aside and there's a couple things wrong with this. One, you're constantly buying expensive external hard drives. And two, there's no backup to that copy of hard drives. So Hard drives do not last forever. It's not a if they'll fail, it's when they will fail. And so the better system is a RAID array like this. We've all seen Linus Tech Tips and he's gone around to Marquez and I Justine and a bunch of other creators and created RAID arrays for them, whether they're custom built stuff, and they're always incredibly expensive, right? They're tens of thousands of dollars. The software to run them is incredibly complicated, at least in terms of if you're not a computer person. And, you know, they take quite a bit of management. With a Drobo, it's one of those products that takes that really complex back end workflow and makes it really easy on the end consumer. So basically all you do is buy internal three and a half inch or two and a half inch SSDs. You plop them in here, download the Drobo software, and it takes care of the rest. And what it does is makes your computer see that you only have one hard drive. So even though I have six in here, the computer see one, and it makes it look like one giant hard drive. And so after a couple months or once a year, whenever you fill up storage, you can simply add more drives. And then when I fill up all eight bays, let's say 
I wanna take out this three terabyte, I can just plop it right out and then put a 10 terabyte or 14 terabyte, whatever is available at the time that I wanna put in there. The other drives have enough data on them to recreate uh, documents. It again splits it amongst all of them and you don't lose a thing and now you have more storage. So this guy can actually have up to 128 terabytes per volume of storage and you can have I believe 256 terabytes of total storage completely in there is what its max is. But this one on the back has a little efficiency drive, slots back there. You can actually put a dusty. You can actually put a two and a half inch SSD in here. And what this is going to be is a hot data cache, which simply means that it recognizes your most used documents, system files, programs, and basically puts them on a super fast SSD so they're always ready to go. It doesn't ever tell you what documents, what applications are being cached on this drive. I wish I could see that, but it basically just tells you in the software whether or not this drive is working and how much storage it has. So I have a 500 gig Evo drive in here. And that just clicks right in there. But if you're like me and you just need vast amounts of storage, um, you want an option for a drive failure if that were to happen without losing anything and you need something that's very, very fast, then something like a Drobo, I can't recommend enough. But the big thing here that everyone needs to listen to is that RAID, RAID, RAID is not, not a backup. backup. The most common misconception is when people are like, hey, do you have a backup for this? And they go, yeah, yeah, I got a RAID. RAID is not a backup because you want two copies of things in totally different locations, totally different failures. Because while a drive or two can fail, there is things as total system failures, which are rare, but they certainly can happen. Maybe you get a power surge and it gets hit by lightning and it fries the whole thing, or it gets stolen, or your house goes up in flames like Austin Evans back in the day, and you lose everything that way. Raid's not gonna help you there. And so what I use is an incredible service from Backblaze. Now this isn't a backup like Google Drive or Dropbox or iCloud Drive where you're like dragging things to the cloud and you're constantly accessing them from like an app. They do have an app that you can see the system folders for. There's really a place to backup to the cloud or an offsite server center. And then if something like I mentioned before happens where total system failure, loss, stolen, water damage, fire, all that good stuff happens, then you have a place to recover and, and save all of your data from. They'll either send you a physical hard drive in the mail, or if you just need a couple documents, maybe you accidentally deleted something off of here and you didn't recognize it for like a year, you can just download a zip file from Backblaze's website and you can see all your files there. But the way it works is it's totally in the background. You just install it on your computer. You pay for a per computer license, and then whatever drives are plugged into that computer, you can back up under that license. So the fact that I pay for one license for my Mac Pro, the fact that I have this plugged into that computer, even though this is backing up 27 terabytes of data, still all under that like six or seven bucks, which is just crazy awesome. So if you have never heard of Backblaze before, you're welcome. So, so far what we've talked about is a lot better solution than having a ton of hard drives around. Get something like a Drobo or something that has a RAID array so you just have to buy lower cost internal hard drives that you can then add to. It'll be so much easier because then you don't have to mark which hard drive is, you know, 2017, 2018. Everything can be in one place. You can always access that footage or data and because that's not a perfect system, you have Backblaze to back up to offsite. So that way, if something physically ever happens to your RAID system, you still don't lose anything. That is a backup system. Finally, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Recoverit. So funny enough, I was in the middle of planning this video when they reached out to me asking if I want to check out their software. I checked it out and I just kind of laughed of how perfect timing this all is because let's say you do all that, things still happen, you still can lose data. And so why not have a great final step for a data recovery process? So Recover it is a platform made for both Mac and Windows and it essentially can be that last line of 
defense or saving if you were to accidentally delete any of these important documents. Basically, all you do is start up the software, recover it, choose which drive you accidentally deleted files or you misplaced or something happened to, maybe it could be a virus, you could be accidentally reformatted something, or you emptied your trash by accident without knowing what files were in it. You choose the location that you want to recover from, click recover, and it's going to spend a certain amount of time basically looking and trying to find as many files as it can to recover for you. Now keep in mind that depending on how big the file is, what sort of data was in it, this is a process that can take many hours, but of course it's worth it if you get your data back. Now if you're like me, who is curious about how data recovery actually works and doesn't just want to keep thinking about it as some magic sauce that's going to save all your problems, here's a super simplified way of how it works. Basically your computer has two types of data. You have visible data and you have invisible data. And the invisible stuff is not invisible, obviously, to your computer, just to you. The files on the back end that you don't normally see, but it's also the files that are, let's say, in your trash that you delete. Because when you delete something, even removing it from your trash, it's actually not permanently deleted. The computer basically just tells whatever hard drive that stuff was stored on that, hey, this data is okay to be overwritten. So what it does is it makes those files invisible to you as the user and shows that you have all this available space, but really it's all sitting kind of underground there, ready to either be permanently, permanently deleted or brought back to life by some recovery software like Recoverit. And so what happens next is crucial to whether or not this software or any recovery software will work or if you truly will lose your data. So listen up. If you recognize that you accidentally deleted a bunch of stuff, reformatted a hard drive, or emptied your trash, and you immediately have that moment like, ah, I can't believe I just did that, oh no, I lost everything, that's the best time to launch the software, run the recovery process, and get all your data back. I've tried it, it works flawlessly. But where no one's gonna be able to help you is if you continue to use your computer, write a bunch of new data onto it, as in, copying new files to that drive, creating new folders, then it kind of gets thrown up in the air how much of the data or if any, the recovery software is going to be able to get it back. Because as soon as that new data is created, then it basically overwrites and takes place of those old data bits and permanently, permanently, 100% gets rid of those files forever. And no data recovery is really going to be able to bring it back. But having software like this on my computer is a fantastic peace of mind. If I ever mess up my backup, mess up my hard drives, I know that I still have one last line of defense to get my lost data back, which for me is priceless. So thanks so much to Recover It for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want more information or want to download Recover It for yourselves, it will be the first link in the description below. So there you have it. If you're like me and you've ever lost important data in the past, you know why today's topic is so important. And if you don't have a backup solution already, I sincerely hope that I've convinced you to at least develop a backup solution of your own. And lastly, if you haven't already, it'd be a huge help if you hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and smash that like button. See you guys in the next video.